Hello everyone and welcome to my Octavia rework concept. For this rework, Octavia no longer uses finger guns and now uses her sword to cast her ultimate. Hope you guys enjoyed this Octavia rework and peace. Just kidding. Following the release of three highly rated and complex characters, Paladin's players were eagerly awaiting the next unique champion to join the roster. Then, Octavia released, and players dropped her faster than a flank main's TP. The main complaint surrounding Octavia is that she is only useful for her passive, and her kit otherwise is very basic, but somehow very clunky to play with. A personal grievance of mine is that Octavia has very little playstyle variety through her talents and loadout cards. My goal with this rework was to utilize tools that Octavia seemingly has in her character design, but not in-game. I also want to allow for some playstyle variety with her talents and loadouts. Ultimately, I wanted to make Octavia a character who isn't solely recognized as a passive. Like my previous rework concepts, I will list the stats first and then explain my decisions afterwards. Like always, keep in mind that numbers can be changed, it's the principle that matters. Octavia's primary fire on the Marksman Rifle will be changed from a single shot to a 4 round burst. Each shot will deal 275 damage with a time of 0.1 seconds in between each shot of the burst. Once the burst is concluded, the weapon can be fired again after 0.5 seconds. This gives the weapon a DPS of 1222.22. The first shot will have perfect accuracy, with each subsequent shot increasing the spread and incurring recoil to the weapon. The spread will reset at the end of each burst. The weapon's effective range will be 150 units, and it will have a max falloff range of 200 units, where the damage will be lowered by 25%. The secondary fire will have its damage lowered from 435 a shot to 375 a shot. However, the damage at the max falloff range of 250 units will be upped going from 239 to 275. To further aid at longer ranges, the recoil from the weapon will be reduced by 20%. The random bullet spread from consecutive shots will be removed, and players can now hold down the button to fire, instead of having to rapidly click. Commanding Leap will function the exact same as it does now. However, landing with Commanding Leap will now have Octavia sweep the ground with her sword to deal 300 damage in a 90 degree cone in front of her. Enemies hit will be inflicted with a slight knockback. Octavia's distortion field will now work properly. The pre-fire beam from Creeping Barrage will now root enemies for 0.5 seconds. Last of the basic stats is the passive Total War. The only change here is to the Commander Shield. Instead of granting a 575 health shield upon respawn, the passive will instead provide a shield each time Octavia or one of her allies enters the out-of-combat state. 300 HP for frontlines, and 200 HP for everyone else. Now that we've discussed Octavia's new base stats, let me explain my reasoning behind them. I want to start with the passive. Despite the community's distaste for it, I decided to keep Total War because it is vital towards Octavia's identity as a champion. My only change comes to the Commander Shield passive, as outside of TDM, this is the weakest of her options. Unlike all of Octavia's other passives, this is the only one that doesn't have an effect throughout the entirety of a match. The current shield outside of TDM exists to eat up some chip damage and is never seen again until you die. The new shield being activated by simply being out of combat allows it to see more use outside of respawning. Teams with the passive will be just a little more tanky, and this might be a great passive for teams lacking in heals, or a team that is dependent on flankers. Of course to compensate for the increased uptime, the shield has had its numbers lowered from 575 HP per ally, to 300 health on tanks, and 200 health on everyone else. I opted for the increase in HP on frontlines because they are going to be the main source of fire, and 200 HP seems a little light for them. I do believe this passive will remain as Octavia's weakest, since it's the only one that can be directly countered with an item. Still, having use in all four passives will allow for more gameplay opportunities to flourish. To continue, let's talk about the new primary fire for the Marksman Rifle. Many FPS games follow a trend for sniper slash scoped characters where the unsculpt fire mode is just a weaker version of the scoped option. I hate that. The feeling of a mid-range powerhouse with the tempo of the scoped fire is brought to a sudden stop when you have to go Whoa! I'm dying. My carpal tunnel is flaring up at the thought of it. On top of being frustrating to use, I think the current primary fire is lazy, uninspired, and bolsters Octavia's boring status. 
apparently the team that does the trailers for Paladins, thinks the same. Because whenever Octavia is on screen, her gun is firing in bursts. That's exactly what I based the new version of the primary fire off of. Besides making the weapon less clunky, my second reason for changing the primary fire is to make a real distinction between Octavia's close and far range fire modes. Currently, it's better to constantly use the scope fire, even up close, due to the higher DPS. On top of lowering the scope fire's DPS, making the primary fire easier to use at close range will better create a distinction of fire modes. To aid in differentiating the fire modes, I enacted the sharp damage falloff past 150 units. Once you're at 150 units or more is when you want to swap to the scope fire. I wanted the DPS to be higher than the scope fire at close range, but I also didn't want to make the gun too good at close range. We don't need a repeat of crackshot strikes. Ultimately, I decided on 275 damage for each shot and the burst. This gives the Marksman Rifle a DPS of 1222, which is actually a slight nerf when compared to the current version of the gun. However, the burst of 1100 will be coming out much faster than before, 0.4 seconds compared to about 0.9. This method of burst fire gives the gun some kick in close range fights to deter flanks. However, due to the new time between bursts, smart flankers will be able to outplay this. I did want to maintain a slight sense of unruliness for using this fire mode, hence the spread and recoil throughout the duration of the burst. Ultimately, this version of the primary fire won't be that much different from the current version statistically, but the player's perception of it will feel much better. At least, much better than it is now. Next up, let's discuss the secondary fire on the Marksman Rifle. Don't let all these numbers intimidate you. Most of these changes are meant to be quality of life buffs towards the weapon. Let's start with the changes intended for long-range battles. The recoil of the weapon being lowered by 20%, as well as the removal of the random spread on the attack. Despite being a marksman rifle, the current version of the scoped fire feels... off. The constant kickback of the gun and the random bullet spread make the weapon feel unruly to use at range, which goes against what the weapon should be. For this rework, the random bullet spread has been removed, because frankly a scoped weapon should not have it. I also opted to decrease the recoil of the gun by 20%. I didn't want Octavia to outdo snipers in terms of accuracy, hence why I didn't reduce the recoil any further. Another change I opted was to make the gun fully automatic. Paladins has been slowly changing the semi-auto weapons to full auto to reduce frustration when using them. I think Octavia would be a great recipient of full auto as this would make her feel less clunky to play as. These changes comboed with the higher damage at range should make Octavia feel like the queen of mid to long range battles, which ties into Octavia's commanding presence as a leader lore-wise. Of course, all these changes come at a cost. The damage per shot on the scope fire is being lowered from 435 a shot to 375 a shot. This brings the DPS of the weapon down from 1450 to 1250. There's a few reasons for this damage nerf. My main reason was to discourage using the scoped fire for close range encounters. The lower DPS at close range will help to create that distinction between primary and secondary fire, as I mentioned earlier. Another reason for this nerf is to compensate for the weapon being much safer to use at range. Currently Octavia's scoped fire has one of the highest DPS's in the game. I felt that keeping the damage numbers the same, while also making the gun better at range, would make it miserable to fight against. Doubly so when Octavia's new talents are brought into account. Overall, these changes aim to reduce clunkiness and encourage the pseudo-sniper playstyle Octavia should have. Let's jump into the new commanding leap! Um, I just want Octavia to use her sword in game. I find it so questionable that they made the sword a big part of her character design and made it prominent in her select animation, only for it to never be seen in the match. This ability is also the how manyth buck leap in the game. With the exception of Octavia, the buck leaps added after buck offer something unique. Tiberius has the wind up, Lilith has the stomp, Betty has multi jumps, and now Octavia has her sword slash. This new commanding leap intends to make the ability more unique and allow Octavia's to take aggressive dives if they please. Realistically, commanding leap doesn't need to be changed, hence why I made the damage quite low on the sword slash. These changes are intended to give Octavia a bit of flair and reduce her recycled nature. Even though there's no changes for it in this rework, I wanted to quickly discuss Octavia's distortion field. In theory, this should be her strongest tool. The ability to cut visibility so drastically, especially on a pseudo-sniper, sounds incredible. 
in-game, this ability is worthless without cards. That's because there's an extremely common bug where enemies can see health bars through a distortion field, which completely destroys the purpose of the ability. Fix that bug, and the ability will be worthwhile. Last up for the base kit is the ultimate Creeping Barrage. At base, the ultimate can feel pretty random and underwhelming. The display of force talent fixes the reliability of this ultimate by rooting enemies in place with the pre-fire beams, on top of increasing the main beam's damage by 600. Since the display of force talent will be getting reworked, I wanted to shift some of its strength into Octavia's base kit. The 0.5 second root is less extreme than the 1.5 second root the current talent provides, but it will make it trickier for opponents to escape the ult, as well as providing Octavia and her allies the opportunity to hit rooted enemies while the ultimate is casting. This in turn should make the ultimate feel more reliable. Alrighty, now that the base kit has been discussed, let's move on to the next section of this rework. Loadout cards. Clean shots. The ult card would reduce your weapon's recoil by 20% per level while using Commanding Leap. The new card will reduce the recoil and spread of the Marksman Rifle by 20% per level while hovering. Snap to it! The old card would grant you ammo back after an elim. The new card will heal Octavia for 60 health per second scaling while hovering. Tactical Fire The old card reduced the time it takes to bring up designated sites. The new card increases the duration of Octavia's hover by 0.4 seconds scaling. Fire and Maneuver The old card boosted your move speed after getting an elimination. The new card will increase the effectiveness of your passive by 10% per level to yourself. And last, a slight tweaking to the Vantage Point card. The new wording is as follows. Reduce the cooldown of Ability 2 by 0.15 seconds scaling for every 0.5 seconds while standing in the Distortion field. As mentioned earlier, Octavia's cards offer little in terms of playstyle variety, which I believe is a major factor towards her low popularity. Currently, the main way to build Octavia is with damage reduction, either from Leap or Dome. My proposed card changes intend to create some more options for Octavia loadouts. You might have noticed a few cards surrounding Octavia's hover. Yeah, remember that ability? It's okay, neither did I. In fact, I almost forgot about it until I was near the end of this rework concept. I didn't opt for any base kit buffs for the hover since it's not used too often, but I wanted to encourage more use of it through loadout cards. Let's start with a tweak to clean shots. Realistically, the effect only takes place while you're hovering, so I changed the wording to reflect that. The addition of a spread reduction to the card grants benefits to both forms of fire. I think this card has great potential for a high-risk, high-reward playstyle. You can obtain incredible precision at the cost of being immobile. To bounce off of that, let's talk about Snap to it. Originally, I was going to have this card be damage reduction on hover, but Octavia already has two cards that do that. I also realized that Octavia has no healing cards. Not a single one of her current cards grants her healing. Tactical Fire will remedy that. I opted for higher than average healing of 60 per level, instead of the standard 50, since the healing will be obtained by standing still in the air, thus making Octavia an easy target. To tie in the hover cards is the new Tactical Fire. It's puzzled me that the devs made a big deal about Octavia's option to hover, when the ability has such a short uptime of only 2.5 seconds. With Snap to it capped out, you can boost that duration by a further 2 seconds, making Octavia's hover last for 4.5 seconds. Moving on to a card for the distortion field, Vantage Point. The weird wording will make sense once we get to talent reworks, but despite the change in wording, the card functions exactly the same. In fact, it has more procs per use of the distortion field. See, the current card procs once every second, but the distortion field lasts for 3.5 seconds, so you miss out on one cooldown reduction proc. The new card procking every half a second will remedy this. Lastly is a card that interests me much, Fire and Maneuver. Outside of picking which one you want, you can't do anything further to Octavia's passive. This card changes that, and allows for some selfish play. I want to discuss the numbers, since some might be confused about this. At level 1, this card boosts the chosen passive's effect by 10%, so for cooldowns, you'll have an 11% reduction instead of 10%. For ultimate, you'll have a 17.5% increase to ult charge rate instead of 15%. For credits, you will gain 110 credits every 6 kills instead of 100. And the shield will be 220 HP instead of 200. When the card is capped out, Octavia's passives will do one of the following. 
Octavia's cooldowns will be reduced by 15%. Octavia's ultimate charge rate will be increased by 22.5%. Octavia will gain a bonus 150 credits for every 6 enemy champions eliminated. Or, she will gain a 300 health shield every time she enters out of combat. I think this card will have a ton of interesting play scenarios, since it can be used with each passive. I am a bit worried that this card could be overpowered, hence why I put the restriction of the extra passive benefits only affecting Octavia herself. Last up, let's talk about Octavia's talents, all of which are being changed. Hell or High Water. The old talent would create a pool on the ground after you land with Leap. Standing in the pool would heal for a small amount and cause Octavia to consume no ammo. The new talent is as follows. Commanding Leap now has a second attack when casting the ability. Your air control is increased by 70% while it's active, and enemies hit with the attack take 15% increased damage from all sources for 3 seconds. Asymmetric Warfare The old talent would damage enemies and heal allies who are in the distortion field. The new talent is this. Allies inside your distortion field are healed for 250 health a second and share your distortion field card benefits but the distortion field no longer obscures enemy vision. Display of Force The old talent would buff your ultimate. The new talent will Increase the effectiveness of your passive by 50%, but allies only gain the effect while in a 150 unit range of Octavia. Alright, let's put a pin in this and discuss these talent changes. Currently, Octavia has the most boring talents in this game. I wanted to make each talent feel unique, while keeping a sense of that pseudo-support playstyle that the current talents uh, attempt to convey. First is the new Hell or High Water, a talent that started as increased maneuverability to Commanding Leap, but went all over the drawing board. I really wanted to give Octavia an option to perform 360s and take other unique routes with Commanding Leap. The increase of air control should allow for that. To maintain some support capabilities, I opted for a defense debuff on enemies hit with the sword, this means that all damage, not just weapon shots, will be amplified by 15% for 3 seconds, if Octavia lands the slash that is. Of course, landing the slash with the base ability seemed troublesome. I was already picturing scenarios where Octavia players cape marsh themselves trying to activate the bonus damage for their team. To alleviate this, I added the second slash at the start of the attack, which will make the damage boost safer and more reliable to activate. Of course, this opens up some other unique playstyles as well. Octavias can deter flankers by hitting them with the initial slash and then following up with some high damage scope shots. Or, Octavia can hit someone with the initial slash, apply the damage debuff to them, and with the increased maneuverability, fly to a different enemy and tag them with the damage debuff as well. Or, Octavia can potentially tag the same target twice, allowing for a 645 burst. I did intend for this to be the more selfish Octavia talent, but I think it will have some great team potential as well. Next is Asymmetric Warfare. It's no secret, but pre-nerf Smoke and Dagger was one of my favorite talents in this game. The current Asymmetric Warfare attempts to mimic its style by healing allies, but it feels so unimpactful. Octavias often have pathetic healing numbers with this talent. Rather than just buff the healing, I opted for this talent to offer card benefits of Distortion Field to allies. Unlike Smoke and Dagger Sky which focuses on healing and speed, Asymmetric Warfare will prioritize damage reduction and cooldown reduction with these two cards here. Now you see why I changed the wording on Vantage Field. I want to give you a scenario on how this talent plays out. Octavia's tank is on the point, just used their movement skill and is on low health. Octavia's flanker, also on the retreat, just used their movement skill, but is out in the open. You throw down the distortion field. Both allies are able to survive the barrage with the DR, and they are able to escape thanks to the cooldown reduction on their movement skills. If these benefits sound strong, it's because they are. But when compared to Smoke and Dagger, Octavia only has one charge of distortion field on a 16 second cooldown. That cooldown starts when the ability ends, so it's closer to 20 seconds. Meanwhile, Sky Smoke Bombs have a cooldown of 14 seconds that starts immediately. Sky also holds stronger cooldown resets on Smoke Bomb when compared to Octavia with her Distortion Field. Like Smoke and Dagger Sky, if Octavia wants to fully maximize this playstyle, she's gonna have to dedicate a good chunk of her build to do so. If you cap both DR and cooldowns, that's two thirds of your loadout gone, leaving little room for vital cooldown reductions or self-sustain. 
I think this talent will have opportunities for high impact team plays, hence why I removed the vision obscurity from this version of the field. Of Octavia's new talents, this will be her most selfless. Last of the talents is the new Display of Force. I must admit, I was debating on making the bonus passive benefits be a card or a talent, and instead opted to do both. This talent will bolster the effect of any chosen passive by 50% to Octavia's whole team. But there's more risk involved, since allies only gain the passive's benefits if they're standing in a 150 unit radius of Octavia. If they leave the range, they lose the passive. If Octavia dies... I'm dying. Her whole team loses the passive. Oh. Just to clarify numbers on this one. Cooldowns will be cut by 15% when in the zone. Ultimate charge rate will be increased by 22.5% while in the zone. Frontlines will gain a 450 HP shield while entering out of combat while in the zone, while other allies gain a 300 HP shield. And allies will gain 150 credits for every 6 champions eliminated while in the zone. Just to clarify that last one, to avoid confusion, the credit gain will still be map-wide, but it will only count kills made in a 150 unit range of Octavia. Despite boosting her passive capabilities for her whole team, I actually see this talent being a selfish option for Octavia, especially when comboed with her new Fire and Maneuver card. Overall, my goal with all these talents... well, it was to be better than these. But it was to create some actual playstyle variety between talents, while still maintaining Octavia's supportive nature. With this rework concept, Octavia will finally encompass her status as a commander, with the capability to deal consistent damage on top of aiding her team in unique ways, I foresee her being a very popular pick. And that's it for this rework concept. What are your thoughts? Overpowered? Underpowered? Let me know down below. Don't forget to clap that like button and laser down that sub button. Snatching the bell is also a great way to stay in the loop. As always, I'm Yellow Ninja, and peace.